As a rule, I tend to not look at other reviews until I've completed my own write-up. But that was hard to do when it came to Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight, the fourth installment in Bomb Service's popular 2D franchise. Not only were all my friends raving about the gorgeous graphics and beautifully realized world, but it also picked up overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam and pretty much everybody loved it on Metacritic. Unfortunately, now that I've actually played it, I have mixed thoughts on this side-scrolling adventure game. I hate to be the contrarian voice here, but so much of Mamadora left me underwhelmed. In case you missed it when it debuted on PC back in 2016, Reverie Under the Moonlight tells the story of a young priestess who is trying to save the land from a powerful curse. While her intentions may be good, she is definitely not prepared for what stands in her path. Equipped with only a leaf, she sets out to meet the queen and break the curse once and for all. This does not go as planned. Momodora is a 2D action adventure that is more Dark Souls than Castlevania. It's a game about exploring a strange world, picking up items, and killing a series of challenging bosses. Along the way, our hero will find upgrades that'll let her dash in the air and turn into a cat to explore cramped areas. It's not the most original formula, but it nails the atmospheric tone, and both the characters and visuals are charming. Before I dwell on all the things I disliked about the game, perhaps I should start with what's good. For starters, the graphics are gorgeous, and I loved the animation. There's a real attention to detail in each of the locations, and I like how different it all looks. This is not the kind of game where you just mash buttons to win, and I like how you have to roll around and use real strategy to beat some of the more difficult creatures. I also really like how non-linear the path is. Sure, you'll need to upgrade your character in order to access certain areas, but most of the game can be tackled in whatever order you see fit. This is something I wish we would see more of in games like this, and I can imagine the non-linear elements make replaying the adventure a lot more fun. In that sense, Momodora reminds me of Dark Souls, which is a good thing in my mind. The truth is, I immediately fell in love with a lot of what Reverie Under the Moonlight was doing, and fully expected to agree with my friends and colleagues. But the longer I played, the more frustrated I became with some of the more questionable gameplay decisions. My biggest complaint involves the cheap hits, which are everywhere. I'm all for a challenging adventure game, and even gave Dark Souls high marks when it first came out but the enemies never felt especially fair. It's one thing to have to dodge the enemies you can see, but far too often you'll be forced to contend with enemies that are off-screen throwing painfully accurate fireballs. You'll walk into a room and be immediately bombarded with attacks from enemies you can't see or fight. By the time they're in your sight, you'll have already taken a few hits and lost a significant amount of health. And that brings up the other big problem. For whatever reason, the enemy attacks will take 40 or even 50% of your health in a single hit, which means you'll die after only a couple of strikes. Your fragility can be especially annoying when exploring the world because you'll have to replay big chunks of the game again because of an attack you didn't see coming. It's not impossible, and clearly I was able to get through it with effort, but I kinda hated the amount of cheap hits I had to endure to get there. The fact that a simple enemy can take more life than most of the bosses suggests that the balance is a little off. I was also disappointed by the short length and unexciting power-ups. The items and abilities you pick up just aren't as interesting as the world you're exploring, and there was nothing here that felt especially original. That said, there are a lot of hidden areas to uncover for people who want to see the full map. The exploration aspect of this type of game is almost always fun, and Momodora is certainly no exception. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's the best part of the game, except for maybe the graphics. As frustrating as the cheap hits can be, I don't hate Reverie Under the Moonlight. There are a lot of aspects of the game I genuinely enjoyed, such as the visuals, combat, and exploration. But constantly getting hit by off-screen enemies isn't fun and there were way too many times where I died in dumb and cheap ways. I can certainly see the appeal of this brand new Momodora sequel, but I found that it left me a little cold. Hey, thanks for watching our review. What can I say? This has been a great week for modern games pretending to be older games. We recently took a look at both Rip Tail and Battle Princess Madeline, 
and yesterday we posted a review of MacBat64. But don't get too comfortable, because tomorrow we're going to be taking a look at a first-person horror game called The Crow's Eye. This one's decidedly not retro. Look for that to go up at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, right when the embargo lifts. In the meantime, I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.